what are some problems we can have when we're shooting our video in the studio or on site? Uh, for example, of course, the green screen can present problems. You can't get the key correct. Maybe somebody wore green. In fact, what's the reason you use a green screen? You know, if you even know that, you can, you can Google it. It's pretty easy to find the answer instead of other colors like pink or red. So problems come up, and what can we do about that? Well, let me go over some of the most common problems in lighting and see if I can give you some tips to help solve it. Remember, every lighting situation is whatever you want it to be. You make the lights you want. But sometimes some problems keep occurring. One of them is people's face and skin. People have different tones to their skin, different colors. They can reflect the light differently and look differently. So you need to take that into account when you do your lighting. Also, for example, one easy example is someone's going bald, they're losing their hair or they have no hair. But what happens when you have no hair and you have a very bright light shining on someone and they have no hair? The light is shining off and you get a very bright spot there and that can look not so great. It can be way, way too bright, for example. What about glasses? This is a problem I almost always have when I'm shooting, recording students because so many students have glasses here in Taiwan. And so what happens? The light shines in the glasses. The glass looks like a super bright spot pointing right at the lens. How do you get rid of that? That's a problem that's very common. And another one is screens, television screens or monitor screens, because often when we're shooting our video, we would like to have a screen to show you something. For example, when I shoot my video, sometimes I have a screen right here, and I want to show you something on a monitor. Well, that monitor would be reflecting the light right into the camera. How do you solve that problem? Let's take an example. Now this example is a monitor, but this example could also be someone's glasses. Very common. You're wearing glasses, it looks just like this. The light is right in the person's glasses. Very, very bright. This is a TV screen, and it's set up very normal. Just a regular TV screen, flat, on a stand with wheels, looking straight forward towards the camera, and look at that. You can see one of the three points of lighting coming right at the screen. Oh my goodness, that's really not fun at all. So what we can do to solve that problem is very easy on one hand but difficult on the other hand. The easy thing to do is tilt the screen just a little bit. In this case maybe three to five degrees. You see it's just tilted a little bit instead of straight or worse. If it's tilted the other way it's even worse and if it's straight it still gets the reflection. I can't draw a straight line. You get the idea. Now the light from the one, two, one and two point lighting comes down to the screen and bounces down. But if the screen is straight, then the light has more chance to bounce up towards the camera and the camera may catch that light. And if the screen is angled backwards, it's even worse because now that'll go directly into the camera. So you need to think about that angle. That's one way to solve it. Here we just tilt the screen a little bit. Now, how does that work for glasses? Well, in glasses, it's the same thing. Instead of looking directly at the camera, the person can just tilt their head down a little bit. And you can tell them, tilt your head down a little bit. Ah, that's perfect. You can raise your lights, of course, get the lights a little bit higher, but even so, that doesn't always help. Sometimes the light's still in the glasses a little bit. And you need to remind them, tilt forward a little bit, tilt forward a little bit, and they just tilt a little bit. Not this much, that's what you There's a little bit on the head, and the reflection will go away. That's easy to say, it's hard to do. Because when you tell people to do it, they listen for one minute, and then they forget, and then they lean back. And of course, if they lean back, the angle can be the opposite of what you want and make the reflection even worse, which is, uh, yeah, no fun at all. So you need to keep reminding people, not an easy job. Here we have the result. Now we're from the camera's perspective, looking at the screen. The screen is tilted just a few degrees, three degrees forward. And now there's no camera reflection at all, completely clear. 
Remember, just a minute ago, the lights were there, and now the light reflection is kind of up higher. It's off here, you can't see it because the screen is tilted at a slight angle. Okay, so that's it for lighting. Again, there are many great lessons by many experts and amateurs on YouTube who show you lots of lighting. I would say that the biggest problem for lighting, though, is just getting the lights. It's easy to say, I need three-point lighting, but then you need to have at least three lights. Well, Professor Morden, is that really so important? I'm gonna make a video with my friends and we're just gonna go outside and shoot something. Sure, that works, but what about reflectors? You can take reflectors to reflect light. That will help. Sometimes you've seen people when they're doing wedding photography, I'm sure, and they have these great big silver reflectors to reflect light, or these white styrofoam boards to reflect light. That helps to reflect light up to get a better picture. Or what if you're inside a room and it is dark and you need a light? So you need to prepare lights. If you come to the lab, we have lights you can borrow and take out. So come talk to us. We even have batteries for lights that you can use on location. So good luck on your lighting. In front of me are two lighting equipments that you will find in the marketing and lab center. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to go for the halogen lights. Now, the halogen lights is fairly easy to use. First of all, you would plug the light in, press down on this button to turn it on, and then adjust the brightness based on your preference. However, there is a lot of advantages and disadvantages that may help you decide whether or not you prefer halogen lights or LED lights. And one of them is that um, halogen lights are extremely cheap. You can get these things uh, a couple hundred dollars in the hardware store and compared to um, LED lights which are overwhelmingly priced about ten thousand dollars. Now second, because these things are so small they are really really portable in these boxes and it's convenient for you to go whenever you need a quick setting. Now on the other hand um, LED lights are extremely sustainable and they have a longer um, lifetime and they use uh, really really cheap power when compared to halogen lights. Finally, I forgot to tell you a very important side equipment. These cookie baking gloves. Because uh, halogen lights are so hot and so bright, they get overwhelmingly hot and it's impossible to touch them with your bare hands. So it's important to, for you to wear these gloves whenever you want to move them, turn them on or turn them off.